Chris and Chris Talk Movies. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Ferry and of course this is my co-host. My name is Chris Huddleston. And today we are both very excited to be talking to you about part two in our Predator series, Predator 2. Los Angeles, 1997. It's the hottest summer on record. Pollution is choking the city. The gangs control the streets. It has not been a nice day! As bad as things are, they're about to get worse. Much worse. Whoever killed him is going to pay. I'm going to finish it. It has almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. Incredible. Four men armed with machine guns by hand. You don't know what you're dealing with. Other world life forms drawn by heat and conflict. He's on safari. Lions. Tigers. The bears. Oh my. Danny Glover, Gary Busey, Ruben Blades, Maria Conchita Alonso, Bill Paxton. Predator 2. He's in town with a few days to kill this Thanksgiving. This is a. 1990 film and the synopsis is los angeles is enduring a heat wave and a crime wave so the pressure on police officer michael harrigan danny glover to solve a strange string of murders is mounting harrigan thinks the culprit can be found among the warring gangs and drug cartels but fbi special agent peter keys gary Busey, knows the horrible truth their killer is a fearsome extraterrestrial with keen hunting abilities that includes superior night vision and the power to make itself invisible. And in addition to Danny Glover and Gary Busey, uh, it also has Ruben Blades, Maria Conchita Alonso, and Bill Paxton. So what, what did you think of this? And what is your history with this movie? Have you seen it before? I think I saw it when it came out. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've seen it since. That's pretty much the same for me. Yeah, so I went first last time, and of course we spoil these films, but it's been out since 1990. Um, last episode we talked about Prey, which is a new addition to the Predator franchise, which we both thought was really fresh. It's on Hulu, and we recommended that. Um, but now we're going to talk about Predator 2. We kind of skipped the original Predator just because it's a cult classic at this point. I mean, I think people love that movie if that's what you're into and there's been a lot of talk about it so we didn't feel necessary to revisit that right but predator 2 danny glover gary Busey, <laughs> yeah let's talk about it what did you think so uh yeah my i saw that i did not see this in the theater i didn't see the original predator in the theater either um but I saw this sometime on home video, you know, 90, 1990 or 1991 or or whenever it came out. And my memory of this was not liking it very much. Um, I remembered very little about it other than just that Danny Glover and Gary Busey were in it. I didn't even remember that Bill Paxton was in it at all. Um, watching it this time, I, I thought this was really great. <laughs> it's I mean. <clears throat> excuse me it's funny because i was checking the box office numbers on it and it was a big flop which i didn't realize um because i think it's viewed now as a pretty decent film you know i think kind of the consensus among you know most people is the original is the best one this is kind of pre prey um but that this second one was a pretty is pretty good and the rest are not great um but it only it was a 35 million dollar budget which is about 75 million today and it only made 30 million which Ooh. is like 65 million today and i don't know I, I i i'm just guessing it was because arnold didn't come back and you know people wanted to see arnold but i think that you know one of the things that this movie does is 
you know, one of the kind of unwritten rules of sequels is to be bigger. And we talked about this in the in the Prey episode that the original Predator film is a pretty small, simple film. And this is much bigger, you know, part of just the fact that you have kind of the city of Los Angeles to to, uh, you know, play around in. But it starts out with this huge battle. You know, these gangs are just rampant. And there's just like this massive shootout in the streets. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like they can't do anything about these these drug gangs or whatever. And I texted you, you know, I had just started watching it. And I said, you know, this is what Fox News says that L.A. is now. You know, it's just like, you know, rampant crime everywhere, you know. But and uh, we should say hey, this was um it was a 1990 film, but it takes place in 1997. So it's supposed to be a near future sure. uh, vision. Uh, and, you know, as I said in the synopsis, there's this heat wave. There's no there's never really any explanation for that. Is there right? Right. I mean, I I don't they didn't say anything about global warming or anything like that. No. But I don't really know exactly what the point of the heat wave is as far as it doesn't really add anything to the story. And it's just everybody's just sweaty all the time. You know, Danny Glover just has all throughout the movie. There's just sweat just dripping off of his face and well, everybody's sweating it, through their clothes. I think it ratchets up the tension. Right. I mean, yeah. you know what it's like during a heat wave. Yeah. Yeah. On edge. And and that true set in. I mean, I remember that that first scene made me think of uh, dread. <laughs> like, uh -huh, it, yeah. Like, so altered by the gangs have taken over everything and the cops are underfunded and. The police station is just mobbed with the, the police station is like a barroom fight. Like in uh, we recently did uh, the quick and the dead and there's like a barroom brawl in there. Mm -hmm. And wait, am I thinking of the wrong? Movie? I don't know what I'm thinking of. Anyway, you know, it's a trope in the Western. The, the piano player keeps playing while there's mm -hmm. this big melee fight going on. Uh, and, and it just felt like. That was the police station. And I thought, well, this is what they thought L.A. was going to be like in seven years in 1990. Mm -hmm. It makes me think oh, so the movie. Um, the one with the teachers that they bring in the basically the Terminator robots. As yeah, the one we it was uh, class of 1999 class of 1999. Like they just thought things were getting so bad that within the next five to 10 years, they were going to collapse into this absolute chaos of like open murder in public school hallways and then that was just there what nothing could be done because everything's out of control and i thought robocop was the same kind of thing you know there's a big trope of the 80s and 90s is exactly. that we were just going to descend into law lawlessness you know right society's collapsing and the only thing that will save us is a sentient robot that turns out to be evil um and, and so there was a little there's a part of me that looking back on it, I thought that was kind of fun and quaint mm -hmm. being like, <laughs> I mean, things have gotten worse in terms of the environment and stuff like that. But society has not collapsed in that way into open warfare in the street. Right. Yeah. But um, I, thought, I thought as a setting, like if you think about the original Alien movie and then a sequel to it, Aliens, you take. A single alien, it's the monster in the dark, which is really very similar to the first Predator, except it's mm -hmm. a monster in the jungle. And then, so they had a very successful second film, which is like, oh, now it's more of an action movie. It's more of a war movie. There are, there's a team of aliens. Now it's our team versus their team. And we have a little more, the playing field is a little more level. We have more advanced weapons. You know, we're approaching. They don't know we're coming per se, but we're not they don't have the element of surprise on us i mean it turns out they do but uh so so i think this is a is, is an attempt to escalate in a similar way you take you take one predator still one predator but you change the environment to be the concrete jungle mm -hmm. uh where there's lots and lots of other players involved and it's uh, from the very beginning the predator zeroes in on our hero as a sort of a unique, right? You see the mm -hmm. predator vision is always following Danny Glover. Danny Glover 
being a sort of a super cop and, a, a, and simultaneously a wound too tight, hard boiled, mm-hmm. like, you know, he has the, the chief of police or the commissioner of police or whatever is this very military, very hard boiled, you know, <laughs> my favorite thing about this movie is, is what a hard ass everybody is. Mm-hmm. Everybody is like capital H hard ass. Like, you ain't gonna take me down to stand down, soldier. <laughs> They're just all barking at each other, They're right? A nose to nose. Everybody is like, "Don't push me! I'll, I'll push you! I want to push you!" <laughs> kind of, except for Bill Paxton, who this, hey, who's guy, this guy is just joking all the time, and this goofy guy, you know. Yeah, but um, he is. He is. His energy is very like. Like there's a there's a news guy and he keeps being like, oh, don't worry about it. public relations is my specialty. And then he basically goes and like twists the guy's arm behind his back and and the houses him away. And he's always saying, oh, it's my specialty. Everyone's super coked up like it's like super high octane mm-hmm. um, testosterone and machismo. And even the, you know, the Latina female <laughs> cop has got the machismo at the wazoo and you're like, oh, no. He, he hits on her. Bill Paxton hits on her first time he meets her and everybody lines up at the window and they're shooting these gleeful looks at each other like, oh, what you going to do? She, she grabs him by the nuts, right? Mm-hmm. And like high-fiving, and paying each other off in bets. It's a super duper, you know, like crazy coming out the ears macho vision of an action movie, which I feel like during that time was the was the mode right Mm -hmm. like everybody and like you think this guy's a badass wait till you meet his boss now Mm -hmm. that guy's about who and then then the the helicopter shows up and it's like oh it's the boss's boss and he's got like muscles on top of his muscles (laughs) (laughs) what is happening uh and i i don't know looking back on that i i think i thought that element of it was really entertaining because all the drug people are literally coked up Oh yeah, they're Starving. literally they're having, having a shootout and they're like, yeah. yeah, they're snorting coke like while they're having the shootout. Yeah, you know? Uzi in each hand, right? They're... And you're just like, whoa. There's a lot of neat. Uh, I mean, the I thought the look of this film was great. I mean, it's it 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 looks big. It looks expensive. You know, even by today's standards, it. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's one scene in the film where uh, the so it's like a, um, the this kind of main drug gang. They're like Jamaican or something or or there's two. yeah, there's this uh, there's scorpion or the scorpions. Yeah. That's a I, it's a Latin gang, whether it's Mexican or Colombian, I'm not sure. And then there are the the Rastafarians that are. Yeah, I guess they wouldn't be Jamaican because they are like into voodoo so they're probably oh, from haiti you know yeah, something i don't like that. i don't remember but there's one scene where they bust into this guy's uh the you know those guys bust into this other drug dealer's uh penthouse apartment and it's just this crazy like almost looks like the aztecs or something he has these big columns that look yeah. like you know aztec architecture or something so there's a lot it's just a especially early on it kind of gets away from this a little bit but early on it's just like wow this film was just written by cocaine basically yeah. you know what i mean you know they they break it it's this huge 80s like he's the head of the drug cartel and he lives in this palatial penthouse apartment in some building in la that i don't know but you're right the design i mean it's got like 35 40 foot ceilings or something mm-hmm. like, what yeah. And he's got this huge bed with like black silk sheets and he and his girlfriend or his wife or whoever she is, they're having this wild, loud sex. Mm-hmm. And then this other drug gang, they break in and they've all got guns and knives and string him up by his hands and they murder him in a ritual way. And, and like wiping blood on him. And they I have mean, candles you're and just like, and stuff. oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, of course, then the predator shows up and he starts butchering everybody and he hangs. He like skins him and hangs him up. Yeah. A little like, I didn't think the predator did that, but I don't know. There aren't really any super rules. No. In the first one, there's the, you know, he would leave guys like hanging in trees skinned. Yeah. I think that the first, whoever the first guy is that gets killed, they find him hanging from a tree. Yeah. 
skin. So I think that, you know, they kind of set that up as a, a thing well, that the predator does. It's graphic. I mean, it's really, you know, like, well, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah. And they make it really hot, like the jungle and a lot of continuity. That means every single time you shoot, you got to make sure everybody's sweat is glistening and that the stains on their clothing are consistent. Like it's a real headache being like, oh, wow, we're going to shoot in hundred degree weather. Okay. Okay. And, and Danny Glover is more or less, you know, he's pretty much playing the role from, right. uh, from Lethal Weapon. And you brought up the... But report. amped up. I think he's amped yeah. up. Like, he really has, especially when his friends and his teammates start getting killed, like, he really loses it. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, he is really... He's... In, in Lethal Weapon, it's not that he's incompetent, of course, but he's playing the sort of straight man to um, his crazy partner. Yeah. Partner's the loose cannon. In this one, you feel like he's the guy that has been pushed past his breaking point. And we see Danny Glover breaking. Yeah. You know, and and disobeying direct orders and going rogue and vigilante and trying to hunt down this killer, which he does, which turns out to be way... Because at first, the, everyone sort of assumes this is some new player in the drug scene or some escalation, because that's where all of the violence is coming from in this film. It plays a little bit like, I mean, as the audience, we know what's happening, but it plays a little bit almost like a mystery or a detective. I mean, he is a detective, but detective film, you know, and they're the, 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 the characters are trying to figure out who is murdering, you know, all these different people. Yeah. Um. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then when you bring Gary Busey into it, you know, Gary Busey is being Gary Busey. Um, and, and actually, you know, so he's fun. You, you sent me a clip that I think we must loop into this somehow mm-hmm. of him just being crazy saying what the movie's about with a K. Um, and I'm trying to be like, he must be joking, right? Because what he's saying is so crazy that he must think he's being funny. But it's it's bonkers. I'd say um, it's hard to tell with that guy. But he is he he his character and his performance in this film is very lucid. Like, yeah, yeah, it's there's not you don't get the sense of of some rogue, whatever, like he's hitting his marks. And but we find out that his character is kind of overconfident, really, more than anything else. I was going to say misguided, but they're just overconfident that they can capture this because the FBI knows what's going on. They've been tracking, you know, the alien for and they basically want, you know, uh Danny Glover is kind of he just keeps getting in their way and is screwing up what they're trying to and eventually they just kidnap him and they're just like look this is what's going on it's an alien <laughs> you know sit down shut up and watch this catch the thing they're yeah. trying to catch it not kill it because of course they want to use all it. technology as right. weapons right and guess what it doesn't work out <laughs> so um there's another thing that I just want to touch on that from this, it it happens in all kinds of movies, but it was particularly rife in this era of movies. Is they they have a scene where they go to the tech person, and the tech person uses uh what basically looks like a microwave or a piece of magic technology that like analyzes the doohickey they give them. So in this, it's uh it looks like a kind of a forked spearhead so yeah it's like a spearhead yeah and that the, that the predator has shot and the feds have missed but they spotted when they, they sneak back in they pry this thing out and they have this scene where they go to i think it's a medical examiner but i don't know i don't remember what why yeah a medical examiner would have some kind of crazy advanced um, you know metallurgical analysis machine but it looks like a microwave and you know they go oh it has almost no weight and like, but it cuts like steel Mm. Just like who wrote this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they put it in the microwave, right? And they type some mumbo jumbo on the keyboard. And then there's a screen that comes up that like has it looks like, you know, there's like horizontal colored bars of the components of what makes it up. Mm-hmm. And then to the right, you know, and they're all different lengths. Like it's, oh, it's got six red and it's got seven green, but it's only got three blue, but it's got nine yellow. And then Mm -hmm. as each of the little colored bars pops up, it says unknown, 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 unknown. And I thought 
Nobody designs technology like <laughs> that is not a, a graphic user interface. Like mm -hmm. that, there's no technology that's just like if if it doesn't know what it is, it doesn't say unknown. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> just but but for a one or two second shot that tells the story of like you take it to the wizard and the wizard does his magic and then tells you right what you know they look in the fire and an image appears in the fire or they look at the crystal ball and an image appears in the crystal ball you put it in the microwave and it comes up on the screen you need something that shows oh you know now science proves it or magic proves it there is we don't know what this is this is yeah. not from here right and and it's a plot thing that's used very commonly in movies and it was used it was almost necessary in science fiction movies of this age mm -hmm. where I, and I love it. I love it because as a viewer, I would just, we grew up on being like, Oh wow. They put it in the machine and it's an uh, of unknown it's origin, unknown. <laughs> but you'll see it in movies when they're in like in deep space and all of these people, you know, to be the astronaut on this ship, they were the very best of mm. the very best. Right. I mean, these people all understand the physics. They've been in this spaceship for years and in simulations. Right. And they know how all of this technology works. And yet you have to have the expositional scene where they explain what would be obvious to them to each other. For yeah. The benefit. You know, mm -hmm. there's a fair amount of that in, in this movie, too, as they try and figure out <laughs> what's happening with the. And I find it super entertaining. Oh, and yeah. While it bothered me. And now I'm kind of like. <laughs> no no tell me explain it to me more yeah uh yeah and so yeah so there's the first half of the movie is more like a detective movie and i actually liked the first half of the movie more than i like the second half of the movie once it becomes mano a mano i guess that's kind of the third part of the movie where where he he figured they so the predator kills all of keys and his team mm -hmm. and then it's just kind of down to him and danny glover and, you know, there's a rooftop scene that's vaguely reminiscent of the end of Blade Runner. And, you know, ultimately he ends up blowing the thing up and he, there's a ship where he meets other predators. Right. And they toss him a trophy. Right. That is a it's like a, an old uh, pistol, like a flintlock pistol that's got some inscription from 17. Which that tied into Prey. Right. Because it was the same year as right. Prey. And it, yeah. Right. And it was Which I, French trappers guns or something. I thought that was pretty neat because yeah. I, again, I didn't remember that happening in this movie. And I thought with Prey, they just completely made up their own thing. But that actually tied into, you know, because it's 1715 in Prey. And so, yeah, it was one of those French trappers, you know. And uh, so I, that the guy in that film took it as a trophy. Yeah. And for having killed the predator, they kind of give him whatever this earth trophy that they had <laughs> you know right yeah you deserve this and that was kind of neat where they you know he's he's killed the predator and then you know he's in the ship and then all these you know first it's the invisibility cloak thing you know a bunch of them and then they you know appear and it's like oh well what's he gonna do now there's like a half a dozen or eight or ten of these guys and it's like i guess you know he uh, he killed one of theirs, so he gained their respect or whatever, you know, and okay. so they're not going to, you know. Um, and I'm not sure that the, how that works, like the code of honor among yeah. you, you wouldn't just kill this guy. Yeah. I mean, they obviously consider us an inferior species. But but even in, uh, um, wasn't there some stuff even in Prey, like the one scene where she gets caught by the trap? And, you know, the predator by the like bear trap or whatever. Or the, yeah. And, I mean, you know, they don't seem now I'm putting myself in the minds of the predator. They don't seem interested in. It's kind of not a clean kill. You you're know? Right. Well, if you're caught in a trap, it's not I didn't come here. Just to kill wolves. Yeah. I came here, you know, to hunt wolves. And part of the excitement is that the wolves can fight back. Right. No, I have an invisibility device and like laser all these weapons right? and things. Yeah. 
but 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 I draw the line at if the thing's caught in a trap, you know. And so I I think that it sees that that's not really fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there's some kind of code of kind. I don't know. Whatever. Right. It's a predator movie. Or over. Yeah. The- and that was another thing with the set design. I thought the ship was really cool. Yeah. I really liked the cool. design of the inside. You know, it's not practical in any way, but it seemingly because it's yeah. like all kind of foggy and red, you know, but right. it looked the design of it. Was really with cool. Many smoke machines. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so so that was another aspect of uh, of set design that I thought was really like I say it. Uh, it looks like an expensive film. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um I think so. part of it is that and I have done nothing against Danny Glover. I think Danny Glover's a terrific actor and I like his movies, but I think carrying a movie like this is it's is a sort of a unique challenge, you know, and Tom Cruise can carry a movie and Will Smith can carry a movie and and Schwarzenegger can carry a movie. It's not necessarily about being the best, you know, you don't have to be Meryl Streep as an actor mm-hmm. to carry a movie, but there's just something about this that you know you don't. I I don't feel like Danny Glover is really. I don't know quite what I'm saying. It just doesn't. It didn't grip me in the same way. You know, I thought I thought in Lethal Weapon when when it was a buddy film, mm-hmm. and the two had each other to play off of each other. That it that he was a much more. It's not that he seems impotent. I mean, he seems. Uh, totally capable of, um, you know, killing the predator and stuff mm-hmm. in terms of like really kind of movie star in your way through as the lead. I, I felt oh, this, it was a little lacking in this somehow. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I thought he was fine. I mean, he didn't really, he I, I didn't fine. have any problem with him. He yeah. Was fine, but you don't like, yeah. oh, did you see the new movie Predator? Uh, yeah, it's got this cool alien and uh and uh you know Arnold Schwarzenegger was fine. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't you got to be I mean he's he's definitely it's an interesting, you know, and Arnold didn't want to come back and the original director yeah. didn't didn't want to come back. Right. Um and so I, I kind of right move actually. I I think Arnold's instinct on that was probably right. Well, yeah, I mean, it. who knows how it would have done if Arnold would have come, you know, this exact same film, but just with Arnold it, in the it role. It would have made money but just it, on that basis alone, but... Probably, yeah. Um, but you couldn't but, have made this movie. What, Arnold's now a New York, uh, L.A. cop? Like, you, you couldn't yeah. have this... That's true. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't. Dalton, does he show up with keys and he's like part of that team? Yeah. When it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have him in the same, uh, in, in the same film. But, um, I kind of wonder, it's hard to imagine that they were just like, oh, Arnold won't, won't do it. Our second choice is Danny Glover. You know, I, I would have to imagine they probably went, they offered it to several other people before it got to Danny Glover, yeah. not that he's not a good actor or anything, just that he's so different from Arnold and that, you know, he's not a bodybuilder guy. Yeah. And, you know, even though he was in a huge action franchise, yeah. he's not an action star in the same way. He's not, oh, a, but I think he's not an the, Arnold or like a Stallone. We've you know? seen him now, I think was lethal weapon two already out by the time this one. Yeah, I think so. You know, yeah. So we've seen him as a badass cop you know yeah. willing to do whatever it takes to uh true stop the bad guys so i think and that was probably and those were very popular films i think and then that was pretty fresh in people's minds so i think the math on paper looked great mm-hmm. but uh those films i mean he was great in those films those films were really buddy cop movies uh, mm-hmm. and you didn't have that dynamic i mean he had his team but he didn't, you know, his the closest thing he has to a partner gets killed relatively early in the film. And then the other two are kind of R2-D2 and C-3PO, really. I mean, mm-hmm. they're kind of sidekicks. Yeah, I guess, you know, you there's not really anybody else for him to play off of. Right. Um, as there is in the, so the, the lethal predator. Weapon. The predator doesn't give you anything back, right? It's all the mask. It's all the creature design, which yeah, fine in the first one. But then when you start to expand the universe and you're like, oh, this is what their ships looks like. And this is what other ones, variations on that armor look like. And you start to be like, 
you know, this was designed because somebody thought this will look really cool, like the kind of fishnet thing it's got go- going on over its green skin and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that looks really cool when there's a, you know, when when the last 15 minutes of the movie you really see the thing. Mm-hmm. But when you start to get into those mandibles and that weird vagina mouth and it, it just it stops making any kind of sense. And if you look at it too long, you're just sort of like, who designed it? What what went mm-hmm. into this design? You know, what are the function of those weird little fang bimbles that <laughs> you know what I mean? It just yeah. looked, it starts looking corny. Mm-hmm. I, in the second movie. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's like the fact that they've made what I don't know, five, six of them, something like that now. And you don't, plus the aliens versus predator, movies. prey doesn't really indulge in that. Prey doesn't, no. he has a sort of a mask that's kind of some sort of animal skull amalgam, and you don't get any of that like crazy fang action. You know, mm-hmm. it's that's not what this one's about. Yeah, they do have his mask off quite a bit in the you know, in the end of this. Um, so I don't know, but uh, one of the things that I think is funny is how they, and they use it quite a bit in this one. Uh, I don't, I don't think they used it as much in the original. I don't, I don't remember, but where he can, he either records people or he can mimic their voice. And the thing that's funny about it is he will take, uh, you know, they're like little catchphrases and use them like against them as if, I mean, does he understand English? Does he know like what that is being said? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you I, know, you know, Terminator <coughs> had had. Did they do that? And did Terminate? Did Arnold do that in Terminator? I know they use that mm-hmm. in two. I think in the first Terminator also. He used someone else's voice because that's yeah, because like he makes phone robot. calls or something. And yeah. in, in the in the in the T two, they made use of that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know that T two had come out yet by the time this one was made. I but he's a robot, you know. Right. Excuse me, sorry. Right, but I mean, in this film, that felt like a Terminator ripoff to me. Like, oh, yeah, the myth, because that's really cool mm-hmm. in the Terminator franchise. And this felt like, oh, what if the Predator did that too? And you're like, okay, that's cool. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, shut up. Don't worry about it. It'll be cool. You know, it's but just it's like, to... like, hey, hey, Mr. Want some candy? Like he's doing like he hears a kid, you know. And... Yeah. I... Why? But late in the film, what it, what is the thing that Danny Glover says? He's got some kind of, you know, it's, it's know. like it's it's kind of like lethal weapon, like where I'm getting too old for this or whatever, but like, whatever it is, he says something. And when they're hanging off of the ledge, the predator says that back to him, like to make him mad or whatever, you know, it's just like, does the predator even understand what that means? I don't know. They're advanced. They have advanced technology. So maybe they understand. Yeah. And he's kind of in Terminator. It's used as a deceptive device, right? Mm -hmm. He calls the foster parents. This is T2 calls the foster parents and uses their son's voice to be like, hey, where, you know, where are you right now? Or what is that mm-hmm. dog was Woofy's OK? You know, and it's a it's a tactic. It's a deceptive tactic. And in this one, it's more of a taunt. Yeah. It's to like because this this isn't a seek and destroy. It's a hunt. And right. so when it's face to face, he uses these kind of samples to taunt danny glover or taunt his prey Mm -hmm. not that didn't happen in the first one did it i don't remember that not that i remember i don't know maybe it did i don't know maybe i need to go back and watch the first one i just don't care that much yeah (laughs) or i would they're fine movies you know but it's not like and some of these things when it came out i'm sure some of these questions and even like while i was watching it i was thinking like Somebody has probably answered all these questions, you know, because they've done Predator comic books and, oh, yeah. you know, all this stuff. So so I'm sure there's for people that really care, there's they delve really deep in all the yes. lore and all that kind of stuff. I don't I'm like you. I think these movies are fun to watch. But beyond that, I don't care about, you right. know, getting deeper into the backstory and all that. 
Um, I, I, one of the things that I think is, is at least with these first, okay, well, not these first, but with these first two movies and then also Prey, uh, you know, they did the one Predators, I think it's called, where they go to the Predator planet. I don't know if you ever saw that one or not. Lawrence Fishburne is in that. It's okay, you know, but um, I, I think Why one of the... go to the Predator planet? I think they get... Um, it's like these criminals and they're somehow the... It's like the... I'm just going off of memory, but I, I think it's like the the predators like abduct them or something. They like take these, these people that are, and it's like, they take them to their planet and then they're going to hunt them there for whatever most reason. dangerous game. Yeah. Most dangerous game kind of a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, I think as, as so many movie villains are, I think with the predator that, you don't really want to know much about their, you, you don't really need to know their backstory. I mean, we don't need to see a movie where right. we see like baby predators and stuff. You know what I mean? The predator has a wife and like crap like that. You know what I mean? Who's it's talking just, too, but they're predators. Yeah. What's that? Look who's, Look who's talking, talking to, yeah. but it's predators. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we, I think it's th that they're kept pretty mysterious you know we don't really they just go and hunt we don't know where they come from we don't know how any of the technology works or anything all the technology is 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 cool you know and i i think that's um yeah you know you don't you don't need to delve into uh you just kind of go with it and you know even if it doesn't make sense too much sense you know you don't want to scratch the surface too too much you know yeah i do i um, do unlike say the alien franchise which i think past the first one you know ridley scott really the question is sort of like so what's the deal with these xenomorphs and ridley mm -hmm. scott's answer to that is they were they are creations they're not like it's really this sort of creationism myth for him mm -hmm. whether or not he had that when he made the first film, by the time he came to do Prometheus and whatever, when they said, do you want to revisit this universe? Then he was sort of like, oh, we can explore the architects, you know, and 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 human religion and a higher power. And what and what if these xenomorphs are are the creation somehow? Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out, I mean, spoiler alert, but you know, that we create an AI. That's my favorite part of those things is Fastbender's David. I oh yeah. Love that character because I'm so into that stuff. Mm -hmm. We still have not talked to, we haven't done Ex Machina on this show yet, have we? No. And that's I love that movie. And I love yeah, me too. We should talk about that. Yeah, we should definitely do it. Anyway, uh, I was getting off on a tangent anyway. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I is, if you're in, I would recommend this if you were into the franchise and, you know, you you haven't watched this 50 times and you're like us that saw it once. And maybe you saw Prey and thought, well, that's good. I think Predator 2 is worth a revisit. Yeah, absolutely the same for me i i had a lot of fun with this and it's interesting to watch this back to back with prey because they're yeah. just so different yeah you know this is Very. just this is just such a crazy you know frenetic movie kind of you know um and the and, dialogue in it is just that hard-boiled what they thought was you know how cool people talked and right it was it's bonkers which that's a big thing that's different you know, with prey is you don't really have that. Right. For the most part, you know, yeah, I guess you'd have a little bit with the male um, Native American uh, guys. But but yeah, I mean, this is again, this is where, you know, Predator 2 is one of the similarities to the first one, because the first one had all the macho talk where, you know, they were trying to out macho each other. And, yeah, and even were, on the yeah. set, like Arnold and and uh, Jesse Ventura and those guys were like trying to their stories of them, you know, trying to out macho each, each other. Um, one thing you, you brought up the, uh, the reporter guy that, that Bill Paxton goes. Yeah. After. And, 
And I don't know if you recognize that guy or not, but um, he, he's a little bit kind of lost to history. I mean, younger people would have no idea who this guy is because he's been dead for quite a while. But that guy's name was Morton Downey or Morton Downey Jr. Do you remember him? Vaguely. So, so he was like a he was like a uh, well, even I don't know, kids maybe wouldn't know like what Geraldo Rivera used to be like. But he had this, you know, there were a bunch of these uh just really sleazy talk shows where they and even like oprah winfrey's oprah oprah winfrey's show kind of started out that way where they would just kind of have these freakish people you know on there and he was almost like borderline like uh i think almost a little bit like a rush limbaugh or something like that and he had this you know he was super controversial and had this big show for i you know probably only lasted like a couple of years that that was popular but he they uh he did more than one thing where he kind of played that character but yeah. in, he he was on an ep, on a tales from the crypt episode that was the same kind of thing where he was this like s- sensationalist reporter guy going into a haunted house um it was and, uh, in the very early days of tab, what has become kind of tabloid, tabloid journalism, yeah, tabloid TV. Yeah. So he was kind of an interesting. And he, it felt very Fox News, very Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Know, meets um, Howard Stern. Like it right. was it was very uh, sensationalist, but he was always showing up and shoving a camera in someone's face and provoking them to try and re- yeah. the reaction, you know, so. Now that's just standard operating procedure, but I think. But at the time, it was a big, you know, it was really 80, controversial. Yeah, and, it was like, oh, this is crossing all this is all the lines of propriety. It's like, have you no decency, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I say, he's just kind of a guy that's almost like lost to history because it's yeah. not like, you know, those are being replayed anywhere or anything right. like that. And he's been dead for he he died of cancer, I think, because he smoked on TV. That was one of the things like he was like smoking all through a show and everything. And so but uh but yeah that was kind of interesting that that guy was was in this but but yeah I um so here we get into the thing of what uh, uh what do you think are the best films kind of just talking about these three predator and prey and this one i mean it's hard to compare them because they're so different but yeah and i I, again i we haven't gone back i haven't watched predator again Mm -hmm. but i remember enjoying it as an entertainment um but of of predator 2 and prey i'm leaning towards prey strongly um and and it just feeling fresh is a big part of it like i just Mm -hmm. think it's a really fresh take and it's it takes itself seriously as a film, but it it the, there isn't um, it doesn't feel like it's got a lot of Hollywood spin on it or Hollywood no. pressure on it. It feels like yes, it's an action movie, and yes, there are some action tropes, um, but I you know I I, I like that it feels small, and I like that it it um explores one little facet you know sticking to the 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 flintlock pistol i think it's uh i think it's kind of a refreshing take on the idea that these aliens have been coming to our planet for a long time Mm -hmm. i don't know why why this thing would come to earth in 1715 or whenever that was why it would wear different armor, why it would wear a bone mask. Like that doesn't, again, it doesn't merit much thought. It doesn't sustain much thinking. Like when you're like, well, I mean, I guess you could say on the one hand, they, it doesn't seem like the technology is all that different from as far as what it has um, in the, in prey or predator Two. It seems like kind of similar gadgets and stuff. But you would also think, you know, if you think about our society, how we've changed over 300 years, that there would definitely be change in the way, you know, uh, maybe it's not even like a technological thing. Maybe it's just like, 
a style or something, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't I like I'm I'm not I find myself not super interested in thinking about it that right. Long. I, I did find that Prey was entertaining. So right now, Prey would be my top. It's probably uh, I mean, just better overall as a film. But I but I also felt like this was Predator 2 was really entertaining. Uh, it's I checked uh, Rotten Tomatoes and critics ratings. And I don't know if, you know, sometimes the when it's an older film, it will be the ratings from back in 1990. Uh, not necessarily now, but uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it was a 35 percent from critics and 44% from viewers. And a lot of times, you know, these kind of films, the critics will rate low, but you know, it'll have a high rating from uh, viewers. And I, I definitely think it's a lot better than 35% or 44%. I would you know? give it more than 35 too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we review a lot of stinkers on here. And... Yeah. I mean, this is a well-made film, you know, it's, there's definitely some corny elements to it, but yes. Um, but that's part of the entertainment for me. Yeah. I don't, I don't need a predator movie to not be corny. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Again, um, it's, you know, it's not Shakespeare. And uh, rather than play it on here, will you link to the uh, Gary Busey? Sure. Yeah. In the comments or something. Cause I think that, that I got a kick out of that. And if people are yeah. if they want to click on that too, that would be, yeah. It would be fun. Yeah, it's him saying what the film is about. Yeah, which is what, what is this about? And he goes on this rambling answer. <laughs> it's just like, what's happening? <laughs> but he's yeah. doing it with a straight face and those kind of Gary Busey dead eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh. Okie doke. He actually, uh, just like in the last week or so, he had some controversy because I guess he like... Uh, uh, he was at some kind of a convention and I guess like groped a woman or something or allegedly. And so he's enough that, I mean, it was bad. And I guess like they press charges and the, so he might be in trouble. Oh, Gary, uh, <laughs> reel it in, buddy. Yeah. Um, um, Chris and Chris talk movies at gmail.com. That's our handle. Uh, you can email us. You can find us on, I guess, the socials, Facebook and Instagram. YouTube. Yep. YouTube and podcasts and like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Please. And thank you. And comments are always welcome. We love to hear from you and we love that you're listening. Maybe watching. What are we doing next time? I don't know. We haven't talked about it. I, uh, is we there anything? We had a list going there and we've caught up now. Um, yeah, we might have to talk about it off off mic, but yeah. I don't know if there's anything you yeah, and there's nothing right on the are top dying to point. watch. Nothing I'm dying to watch. Um, oh, have you have you watched She Hulk Attorney at Law? At no, all? no. I'm really enjoying it. Is, Is it good? Tatiana Maslan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing or getting her name right. I think it's Tatiana Maslan. She was Orphan Black. Oh, is the uh, actor who's playing She Hulk? She Hulk and great comic timing, you know, great chemistry with Mark. It's only two episodes in, but I don't watch every single uh, metastases of the MCU, but I was curious and I checked it out and I've watched the first two episodes now and it is fun. The CGI is bad. It's mm. weird. Uh, like they didn't, because when she hulks out, she's like all CGI and, mm -hmm. I find it distracting. I think it looks um, really cheap, actually. I know that with the trailer, you know, people complained about that. And then there was some talk of, oh, they'll have this cleaned up by the time, you know, the the show actually comes out. But I don't know. I didn't see the trailer, but the it doesn't look, you know, some like the cheaper CGI looks like they haven't run it through the pro as many um, renderings somehow. Mm -hmm. Like when you render a thing and you just do a quick render to see what it looks like and then you do the full render that takes days or whatever like that then then it looks really good and this doesn't mm -hmm. look like they've spent the money on all the render time that's the thing you wonder like is it just not is it still not just not there yet or are they just being 
even with all the money that Disney has, are they just being cheap or what? You know, I don't, I, I, it's, I mean, I've seen better facial yeah. EGI. Um, so I know it's possible. I don't know, you know, I don't know if it costs twice as much or 10 times as much, or just takes too long. I mean, you know, maybe they're shooting it now. And I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I just, as somebody that's sitting there that doesn't really know what's going on underneath, the effect is a little disappointing because it looks like CGI from several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but the performances yeah. are still good. And I used to, I mean, I read She-Hulk comics as a kid, you know, and she was part of the Avengers at one point. I think, it's, you know. it's fun because mm -hmm. this is not, this is not something that she wants. She doesn't want to be a superhero. This is an inconvenience for her in her career. She is a mm -hmm. very rising star of a lawyer. And this happening to her derails that. Mm -hmm. so. And the Hulk is smart too, right? Yeah. And it's a, it's a funny show. It's mm -hmm. a comedy. So yeah, it's a superhero comedy and, you know, she throws cars around and stuff, but. I think that's refreshing too, where it's not just like everybody's really deadly serious, but they're sure to throw in a few zingers and good jokes in there just to keep it light. This is, this, a, this comedy. is a straight up comedy. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I'm enjoying that so far. Did you finish uh, Sandman? Did you watch I all did. of it? Yeah, I did. And I came around on that, the, the, the pilot. Cause I had not read <laughs> the, the uh, graphic novel, the pilot. It was so CGI laden and it was mm -hmm. so it felt like a, an adaptation of a graphic novel. <sighs> I was like, I don't know. I don't know that I'm on board, but I heard from you and I heard from Travis and somebody else was like, oh, you got to, you know, there was buzz about it. People at, at work were like, well, I'm really into this show on Netflix called The Sandman. And I was like, well, so I started watching another episode and I got by the time I got to the one where he goes to hell, I was like, okay, this is this is pretty cool. Like that, I thought that was a really fun episode. And I've only seen two episodes. So I watched the pilot and then I skipped to the diner episode because I knew that one was kind of self-contained. And I had I haven't read all of Sandman because there's a bunch of volumes of yeah. it, but I've read a lot of it. And it's something, you know, I know it's just all a time thing, but uh, if you'd ever have a chance to read the the comics, they're they're just fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and the diner episode as. As messed up as it is, the the comic, um, there's some stuff that they didn't include in there that I'm not exactly sure why they cut it out, but um the comic is one of the, and I didn't read these as a kid. I read these just like in the last five years and the comic that, that issue about the diner is one of the most disturbing, yeah. most frightening things I've ever read, <laughs> you know, and in, in a comic form to scare you, I think is a real achievement, you yeah. know, cause it's just drawings and, yeah. you know, um, but uh, I, I mean, I think they did a good job with it in the in the show. But it's almost one of those things where it's like, OK, it's it would be impossible for this to live up to. Yeah. The, you know, the original. Well, the, the episode material, on but... TV is pretty disturbing. Too. Oh, yeah, it really is really dark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, uh, I I, uh, I need to jump off of here because I sure. have help with family duties yeah so we'll think of we'll think we'll come up with something for the next episode yes it'll and, be a surprise uh, it will be a surprise and we hope that you will join us next time for whatever that show we discuss is um uh if you have nothing else to add i don't think so then chris and i will talk to you next week thanks for listening